10 dividend stocks to build their retirement income stream, says Lawrence Strauss. If you're wondering what that smoke is, no, it's not a fire. It's my grill. Let me actually close this door so you don't get so much smoke in there. It's got some ribeyes on there. Oh. Take a gander, shall you? Hear that? You vegan? What are you missing, everybody? Now we got about uh, probably cool. Eh, a couple more minutes. Uh, of course, medium, medium rare is the way to go. My better half likes medium well. <laughs> All right, so let's read this. I haven't read it. My man Jimmy sent this to me. So Bob Baker, a retired aerospace engineer, so must be smart. Regularly taps a small pension and social security income to help cover his living expenses. Look, I'm sure he's a smart guy. The reason I say he must be smart is because all these people say, look, he's an engineer, he's a scientist, he's this, he's that, and you'll never hear a guy just you know, digging ditches. But he also relies on a steady dose of stock dividends, something that he started to zero in on when he retired in 2015. Once I fully understood the significance of dividends from quality companies, a priority focus for me was not to have it all, uh, not to have to sell any shares of my holdings. He lives in Northern Virginia with his wife. Dividends from retirement accounts are transferred every month into a taxable account to cover RMDs. Uh, his holdings include PepsiCo, CVS, Prudential, long-time dividend payers that support yields above the S&P 500. The yield on dividend stocks in his portfolio is about 4.5%. The notion of using dividends in retirement, either as a way to complement other financial assets, as he does, or perhaps re rely on them for an even large percentage of income, is drawing plenty of interest. The strategy has spawned many of a movement, or something of a movement, encompassing investors of all ages, all ages and levels of sophistication. There are even Facebook groups. But these investors are not your GameStop traders. Can we stop ignoring? Just stop. A big appeal of dividends is Brian Bollinger, who uh, in 2015 founded Simply Safe Dividends, is that you're focused on a building is growing income stream regardless of market conditions. Yeah. Uh, the problem, of course, is he's got his in an IRA. And he's transferring it to a, a, a taxable account. <laughs> so he's losing the qualified dividend tax rate. And he's paying instead OI, ordinary income tax. Uh, indeed, during last year's pandemic uh, market route and subsequent rally, dividend stocks lagged. And a number of big names cutters suspended their payout. They're talking about ExxonMobil doing the same. In fact, what is ExxonMobil doing here today? Oh, yeah, hear that grill. Oh, thank you, cow. Look, I always say gr grace to us before I eat. And I always say thank you for the animal that we're eating because uh, I think you have to have nothing but respect. Which is why I like the grass fed stuff, by the way. Um, yeah, so ExxonMobil is at 5744. Uh, looks like they haven't cut their dividend yet. It's at 6, 6%. I bought it at like 11%, so we'll see if they do cut it. Uh, the dividend aristocrats return 8.1%. Uh, that's it. Wow. From the market reached this pre pandemic peak in February till. Uh, the end of this year, 2020, uh, returned 8.1% with dividends. Those companies which have paid out higher dividends for at least 25 straight years 12, trailed the S&P 500 by about 50%. Interesting. The yield of 50-50 portfolio of stocks to bonds once a reliable source of income has dwindled to, to blow two. You know? But last year's sell-off and relative underperformance offered a chance for the nimble investors to add to holdings they consider to be undervalued. It used to be that retirees could live off the cash flows from a portfolio, uh, says a lady from Vanguard. You never really had to think where it came from. But she points out in early 1995, a 50-50 stock and bond portfolio yielded a little bit more than five. Um, that portfolio yield has today fallen to 1.4%. Since pot paltry yields can make dividend stocks an attractive investment centerpiece for retirees. They offer nice yields and unlike fixed bond payments, uh, dividends can grow to hedge inflation. <laughs> which many experts expect to tip up. I had a lady, uh, <laughs> I don't think she likes me, email my man Dan Kuhlberg saying I was wrong on my on my uh, thing on bonds, that I should use total return instead of uh, the coupon. And I completely disagree with that. Um, we're going to shut this guy. Oh, yes. So we sear it on the outside, and we let it cook a little bit on the inside, then we shut that guy down. And I said, I, I, no, you use a coupon. You don't use a, the yield because if you use a yield, you're going to be buying and selling all the time actively. And no one actually does that. 
but no one does that. Anyway, the point being is that, um, what we're getting ready to say. Oh, the point being about bonds is that they don't compound. The bonds, I don't, this is not, I don't get why people can't get this. The bonds don't compound. So you're getting, it's like a dividend doesn't compound if you're just taking the, in, the income off it. I get that. So in this guy's case, he's not compounding, which is fine, but he's getting a growing, potentially growing, could be reducing too, dividend income stream. The dividends grow. That's the nice thing about dividends relative to the bonds. The bonds are fixed. The coupon's fixed, man. That's it. You're not getting more, you're not getting less. You're just getting whatever the current yield is. If you buy it at par, you're getting the current the coupon. If you buy it after par and the price has changed, you're getting the current yield. See why? In this case, with dividends, though, you're getting the dividend per share, and that hopefully is increasing each and every year. So as the years go by, it should keep up with inflation. I agree with that 100%. Uh, the aerospace engineer who lives in Northern Virginia, uh, who worked in legal publishing, not only promotes his, well, who's this guy? Um, this might not be the same guy. This might be someone else. Yeah, but whoever. Uh, the 74 year Van Camp, oh, is an active dividend growth investing blogger. Okay. Uh, not only promotes his investment strategy, but shows us in action. They include Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, uh, and Pepsi. A lot of times when people say, I want to live off income and retirement, um, immediately translate to bonds. One of the breakful, breakthrough concepts of this strategy is you can generate equity income. Did no one know that? Uh, there are many ways to assemble a portfolio of dividend stocks, one of which entails assembling a collection of blue trip issues or just buy a mutual fund. Um, uh, they got Kimberly Clark, PepsiCo. Many investors and financial advisors favor a total return approach. I don't hear any advisors saying, how do I build a dividend paying portfolio that's going to cover 100% of my client's income needs, says a lady from uh, J.P. Morgan. I just see so many more advisors building diversified portfolios that are oriented towards income but are looking for growth as well. Well, you can still get growth on dividend stocks there, lady. Uh, this lady is, uh, so if somebody is skeptical of pointing out that stocks with yields of 3 to 4%, though they deem attractive and safe by some investors, can also pose a lot of risk and lead to overly concentrated portfolios. At any time, there's no way to say whether growth or value is going to outperform. It's not like you can have a lot of diversification within value. Sure you can. But you're most likely underweighting growth, and growth is outperforming. You're going to end up underperforming. It's not, that's not what they're trying to do, though. They're trying to get income they can't outlive, man. They keep up with inflation. <laughs> they're not trying to get the growth. Stop it. Ugh. All right, so do they give us the stocks here? All right, they give us. Uh, AT&T, Coca-Cola, Consolidate, Coca-Cola, don't forget, Consolidate Ed, IBM, Johnson Johnson, Kellogg, Procter & Gamble, SL Green Realty, U.S. Bank Corp, and Verizon. All right, there you go. And the dividend yields uh, 6.9. Oh, Pablo's inside. Oh, man. To 2.4 for P&G, 4.4 for Verizon. And what's this right here? Market value in the billions. Consolidate Ed is only $25 billion. That's crazy. SL Green Realty is only $4.9. Um, anyway, so there you go. That's a pretty good article. I got no qualm with that. I just say, you know, instead of doing all that stuff, just buy the freaking fund. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the aristocrat is doing. Let them do it for it. Or VDIGX. I mean, I own that, just FYI. I'll see you.